Thank you for joining us for our regular podcast here at Unashamedly Ethical and with our current campaign, Running Legacy Leadership. Um, in the studio with me, I've got you, Lise Geldenhuis, as well as Oki van Seil. Oki is joining us as our guest speaker today. Welcome, you, Lise and Oki. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Lise. Thanks, Oki. Thanks, Harry. Oki, thanks for joining us. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Give the listeners something to, to work off. Um, why are you here today? After school, I played professional rugby for 10 years, and then I started to, to work for my money. That was a shocker. <laughs> and um, I've been doing that now for the last 12 years. And that brought me here based in Stirlis. And hopefully I can share some wisdom nuggets um, of my experience the previous few years in rugby and corporate life. Mm. Okay, what's your company called? Chase Growth and Flux Technologies. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, and what do those two organizations focus on? So Chase Growth focus on business strategies and sales training for all the different types of industries and Flux Technologies is a Bluetooth access control software. Um, we assist South Africa and international customers with. Okay. Yes. So playing rugby, I'm assuming that uh, your school career focused a lot around playing rugby at that point in time. Um, and then the rugby obviously stops at some point. What made you decide to go into these fields? Yeah, that's a big part of my testimony, but that wasn't the case. After I played rugby, no one wanted to appoint me at all. Okay. So I started selling calendars. I was one day this rugby player, Yero, and then the next day, absolutely zero. So my first salary after I played rugby was 650 rand a month selling calendars door to door. Mm. Warehouse to warehouse. So that was a big shock. Uh, welcome back <laughs> to reality. <laughs> to reality. And then, but I clearly knew when I got instruction on my heart from the Lord that I need to serve in someone else's before I will be able to one day run my own business. So I did that faithfully for 10 years. Yeah, I think, uh, okay, and to our listeners, we are busy with this campaign called Legacy Leadership. And um, if you followed us for a while, um, you'll see that there's quite a strong emphasis on leadership with regards to um, unashamedly ethical and understanding that if you're running a business, if you're running an organization, if your leader does not lead from the front when it comes to ethics, values, and clean living, um, you'll seldom find success in the organization when it comes to that culture of trying to establish a culture of ethics. Um, you know, leaders are so important um, on the sports field and off of it. Maybe just give us a little bit of your experience with leadership and, you know, maybe just as an intro, uh, you've, 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 you've spent time on the sports field and, you know, there's a, there's a rugby captain. Uh, what, what has been your experience with leadership um, in the run up till now and to this place in your life? On the rugby side, I was privileged or fortunate enough to play under Rasi Erasmus. And I also played for a few other coaches in South Africa and when I stayed abroad in France. Um, so for me, that want to be a good leader and lead with it by example, um, I learned a lot during my rugby career, what is a good leader and what to do and what not to do. Mm. Sometimes it feels like you only learn what not to do. <laughs> and um, with Rossi, there were so many things I remember up to today, the attention to detail, the excellence, the um, focus, the hard work that goes on behind the scenes, that leadership from the front. And then um, in the business side, where I served for many years, is also the leadership and the different styles of leadership and what's the pros and the cons and what happens um, if you apply the certain principles correct and if not, what is, you know, what's the fruit you're going to reap? Sure. And um, so, yeah, you learn a lot. Mm. And it's not theory. Mm. When you start out, it's all theory. But after a while, after being in the rugby world for 10 years and now in the business world for 12 years, it's not theory anymore. You're always teachable and open and you learn and you continuously learn and read books and attend seminars. But now you start to see a picture. If this happens consistently, that is the end result. Mm. So there's a lot to learn. Oh, that's good. I, I think that, that leading by example component, sometimes uh, you, know, you can lose as you climb this big corporate ladder and you start losing touch with what's happening on the ground. Um, and people, people look up to you. That is just the reality of how life works. People 
want leaders um, and yes I am um, you know if you're if you're a believer we know that that leaders do um, do have a bigger responsibility in this process and I wonder always if um, people that are vi vying for leadership if they understand that comes with a great amount of accountability and responsibility you know, maybe we want to shine maybe we want to uh, earn the paycheck but do we understand the the hard yards that come with that but maybe let me yeah. ask you, Lise, if she's got some questions for you at this point. Mm, I think I'm excited to jump into what you have to share with us today because one of the things that we also look at is uh, accountability and transparency. And I know that's something that you have on your heart to speak about today. So, um, yeah, I think if you can speak about a bit about that, what's the importance of accountability, clarity, transparency with from a leader's point of view, but also that obviously then flow through towards your business and the people that's working with you. So what I, my experience showed me, there's a lot of leaders that want to keep everybody in the team accountable, all the team members and the employees. But before we can do that as a leader and a legacy leader, we want to lead with example, I want to leave a legacy that wants to be a great leader. Mm. Um, you need to be clear and then transparent, and then you can be accountable. But if you miss those two, there's a huge gap for failure, for heartache, for not the growth, the necessary growth you can achieve in the business, and it all adds up. And I'll end off by this, but I wanna say it now as well. We've been entrusted to be servants, and we need to be faithful servants what was being entrusted with us. If it's the business, the team, the position, the car, doesn't matter what, we need to be faithful servants. And we only a faithful servant if we improve, increase, and multiply what has been entrusted to us. But if we as leaders, if we're not clear, if we are not transparent, then we can't keep the people and ourselves, vice versa, in the company accountable going forward. So on clarity, just a few, if I may, a few mm. yeah, please, bullet points. Because it's easy to say, okay, clear, clear about what is if you're a leader. Yeah. It's very important to be clear. My um, experience told me in a business on what's the purpose, what's the massive transformative purpose, the vision of this company, because that's the heart of the company. Mm. Yeah. We need to be clear so that everybody knows, all the team members, all the employees know exactly this is the purpose, this is the heart of the company, this is the vision, this is what we stand for. Now, that's very important. And then the next thing that's also important is values. You need to know exactly what's the values. That's the blood that flows through the veins of a business. The people we as leaders need to role model. We need It needs to be on the lips day in and day out of the company, of the business. This is the values. This is what we stand for. Interesting enough, uh, this year I've been asking a lot of companies when I go and work with them with the business strategies or sales training, I will ask the employees team members, what's the values of the company? Mm. Only one in this whole year, only <laughs> one team member was able to tell me oh, what the wow. values of the company is. Mm. And the values are so important. Mm. I remember like when I played for Rossi, one of the values was the attention to detail. That's why there was ATD on the cheetahs on our callers as well, ATD, so. attention to detail. That's, that's a non-negotiable. That is what we stand for. That's the blood that runs through our veins. So clear on, on, on the values are, clear on the roles and the responsibilities. Um, this holiday that was just passed, I spoke to a business leader, and he was moaning and complaining about um, the employees. And I asked him, have you been clear on the roles and the responsibilities, just the basics? And he said, no. I said, yes, and it's, it's difficult to, to moan and groan about, as we as leaders who need to lead, we need to be clear on the values, the targets, increase structure, bonus structures. We need to be clear as leaders. And a big thing when it comes to clarity is it fair, fairness and what's reasonable, it all differs from, from all of us. And so it's so important. Why? Because the way we've been brought up and our experiences in life. Mm. So if you take a marathon, a seasoned marathon runner and someone who does a 5K run for fun, mm -hmm. If you take the two of them and I start engaging with them, and I talk about, yes, we're going to sacrifice now, we're going to train hard, we, we're going to sacrifice time and finances, and this is what we're going to do in the whole nine yards. The seasoned marathon runner, what he, what's going on in his mind 
is a total different ball game from this person who does now and again a 5k run. He does the sacrifice, the time, the effort, the training. It's two different ball games. That's why it's so important to be clear when we as leaders want to lead and when we lead our teams, even if it's at home, rugby, sport, business, it's so important to be clear with your instructions, the roles, the responsibilities, the values, the purpose, what we strive for. Yeah, I think for me, um, if I bring this back to our previous campaign, you spoke about mind your business, which is your, your impact your mind has on your business. Um, the psychological component of what you're talking about is if you're clear, it creates safety. And I, and I look at employees going from a place of saying, I'm only here working here for a paycheck because I need to survive. All right, so how do you get someone to move from survival to success to significance, right? To actually look around me and say, how do I impact my society? And one of the things I say is, well, if you're in survival mode, you need to, how do you go from survival to success is you probably need to create a safe space. Because if you're not safe, you're in survival mode, right? You're taking what's happening around you all, all time. So for employees, when you, when you bring clarity, you bring safety because they feel safe, right? And if you bring safe, then they can transition from saying I'm only here for a paycheck to saying right now I'm bought into the success of this organization and to see that we are victorious here. So that you can take that next step from you know, s success to significance again. Because the minute that they then increase their income, then they start impacting their communities again. Another thing that's important is when it comes to growth and hopefully all business owners wants to grow their businesses, and as a leader, the two very important factors and keys when scaling a business is strong leadership and systems. And if you're not clear, you fail on both of them. So there comes breaking points as you grow companies and your, as you grow your business. And if you are not strong with the foundation and being clear and what is expected, that systems is not in place and automatically you're not a strong enough leader. So you will go and grow but you will hit the ceiling and because then the foundation is not strong enough. So the clarity is so important. So the other thing you spoke about is transparency. Transparency, it's so important that everybody in the business are transparent all about the roles and responsibilities. What is Harry's roles and responsibilities? What's your least responsible uh, roles and responsibilities? Example, when we played rugby, you know exactly, like Harry, when you watch a rugby game, you know exactly what's Oki's weight, what his body fat percentage, what's his contract, is the year, two year contract, what's his earnings. Mm -hmm. After the match, you know exactly Oki missed so many tackles, he made so many tackles, so many runs, so many hits, so many cleans, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. And then on top of that, the coach critiques Oki, the commentators, rapport gives you a point out of 10, <laughs> but what happens with transparency? When you're clear on the roles and the responsibilities, what is expected of you? You're clear on this is the bonus structure, this is the increase structure, this is how we're gonna, what you need to do to be promoted. You're clear on all those factors. What happens is keeps everybody in the business accountable, hmm. honest and goal driven and focused on the purpose, the vision and the values of the business. Hmm. And that's what happened with the rugby player or the business. Because now you know this is what I expected of me. It's transparent. I can't hide behind excuses. You know exactly. Everybody knows. Harry knows exactly. This is what I expected of Oki. This is what I need to do, when I need to do it, how I need to do it. Mm. It's transparent, but it's vice versa. We know as well. This is what I expected of the coach, of the business owner, the CEO, CFO. It's transparent both ways. So being a good leader is being open vice versa as well. Not we only calling the shots. We need to be open and humble enough and to be teachable and to be corrected as well. I would have loved us to um, to complete in one session, uh, but the, the reality is there's so much good content. So, okay, um, uh, we're going to just encourage our listeners to listen to, to round two of this. I think uh, there's Perfect. more that you've got to say, but maybe just for those uh, that is eager to get in touch with you, where can they get hold of you to maybe hear a little bit more and uh, possibly even engage on, on some of these wisdom components that you brought to the table? I think a lot of companies are struggling with this. A company is Chase Grove, so they can just go to the website or the email is grove at chasegrove.co.za. Thanks very much for that and for our listeners, stay tuned for episode two. Thank you. <laughs>